Hi, I'm Heidi. I made a video a while back about my dog Cooper who has mega esophagus. I actually made it for a few people that were taking care of him while we were going to be out of town. I didn't realize other people were going to watch it, but when I saw that it was helpful, which was only recently, it was a few years ago that I made it. I haven't been on YouTube in a while. Um, but I wanted to make another video that might help people with some tips and tricks and ideas when you have a dog with a feeding tube. Cooper has now had his feeding tube for five years. At the time, it was only two years that he had had it. So I've learned a lot over the years. I'm going to start with some of the basics um, and then go on from there. So one of the first super helpful things with a dog with mega esophagus and a feeding tube is, of course, their little neck hug pillow. I have a few of them, different sizes, just stuff that I've collected over time. It's always a good idea to have not only one, but at least two. So you have a backup if it gets dirty, um, if it gets a hole in it, these are inflatable. And there's the little pop out valve there. And so these are super helpful. It's kind of, we call it his hat, but of course it goes around their neck and it just helps hold their neck up when they lay down. So their head isn't touching the floor because that allows them to regurgitate more often. So this is just kind of a basic one I got on Amazon. I like it better than some of the others. Some of the others have the fabric on the top that's a little more like a nylon with polyester or something maybe, but this is, I don't know if you can see, it's dirty, it's getting ready to be washed. That's why it's not on it right now. But it's kind of a fuzzy one. This one is from Benchmate. As you can see, it's made in China and instead of saying small, it says S-A-M-L-L. -L. But this is a small one and it works really well. This one I got from Wagtail Farms. You can pick your fabrics, they're handmade. This is called the Asafa Love. This one, when he gets aspiration pneumonia, which he still gets about once a year, I keep this one on him for a while because it really does a better job of holding his neck up higher. It's bigger, much bigger diameter, and it's harder for him to get off because he is a Houdini and can wiggle out of anything. So you can check out the Wagtail Farms website. Their regular ones that they make, he's wearing right now, also are similar in size, not quite as big as this, um, and they're called the neck hug. So again, it kind of hugs their neck. So super basic things that you need for a dog with mega esophagus and getting a feeding tube. When they first get their feeding tube, the vet, at least our vet, I don't know what your vet's gonna do, but they put them in this really stretchy material, kind of fishnet, <laughs> if you will. Um, being a hairy dog, this is not super comfortable. Their fur bunches up in it and gets super itchy. So I left him in this for a week or two just to let the site heal pretty well. And then I switched him over to onesies, little baby onesies, right? So what I do is I cut it down. So it's kind of a little half shirt, very, you know, when I get the little doggy prints. I cut a little neck spot in the back so it's not quite so snug here. And then I put, this is a really old one, but I put two little holes in it so I can use a tie, you can use a shoelace, uh, ribbon if you wanna be fancy, he's Mr. Camo Man. But that way I can tie his uh, feeding tube up in the back, I just kind of wind it around and then it ties onto his back and that way he can walk around without it dragging along behind him or bothering him in any way. So onesies, you can get t-shirts. If you buy doggy t-shirts, they seem to be more expensive. If you go online for onesies, you can get them for super cheap. And again, always have backups because they get torn, they get dirty. He's still at 15 years old. He still likes to run in the dirt and play and be a little wild man. So I highly recommend something like this versus these guys for long-term use. You may get a dog that has a button uh, feeding tube where you can, the, the tube itself is detachable and it's just a little button that stays there. So you won't need something like this. But if your dog is like ours and has a feeding tube that's over a foot long, it's nice to be able to wind it up and just tie it into a little circle on their back. Um, Hibiclens, see if you can see this, to clean the site. Hibiclens is a reddish, Color. You can kind of see the red inside. You can get the generic form, which is chlorhexidine gluconate. Same thing, Hebeclins just has the red color in it. Uh, so if you don't want any additives of colors or anything, you can get the chlorhexidine gluconate if you can find it. I like it in small bottles too, because they, they don't last forever, they do expire. So I use this, I squirt it on a cotton ball, clean his site good, and then I take another cotton ball, with some water, wipe it off good, and he's good to go. I haven't had to use any antibiotic ointment in a long time, but when you do need it, if it's, the site starts to look gucky, I recommend something like Neosporin versus a Polysporin or a multi-antibiotic ointment, because if they have a reaction to it, you don't know what they're reacting to. Which one of the three antibiotics could it be? So a single antibiotic seems to work a little bit better. 
Also, with regurgitation, it also comes up into his sinuses, so he's not just having it come out of his mouth, it goes into his nose and to his ears. He has little, you know, flip floppy ears. So the best way to clean his ears that I have found is to get just a basic dropper bottle, and I marked it <laughs> with extra virgin olive oil is what I had on hand that dogs aren't allergic to. You don't wanna use a type of oil that they are allergic to. There are certain oils that I use in my daughter's hair, and, um, the dogs are allergic to it, so I wouldn't use that on him. But I put this in his ears, just a little dropper in each side, massage his ears, and then you can use Q-tips or little cotton pads to clean the ears out because that food will back up in their sinuses and their ears too and get really gutty. So I recommend that. Dogs with mega esophagus and feeding tubes, they even with the feeding tube, they will still get um, aspiration pneumonia on occasion. So having a nebulizer on hand is really nice. This is just a simple one I got at like CVS, I think. You just put the saline drops in there. It has a little charger that you can plug in. And then the saline drops you can get from your vet. These are actually extras from my daughter that has asthma. <laughs> so it's just a little thing of saline. You can put that in there. And they might also prescribe albuterol um, as well. So that's for Mr. Cooper. Uh, just helps when they have uh, aspiration pneumonia. Also, they tend to be on a lot of medications. Oh, surprise, surprise. So I do the AM, PM um, med dispenser. I also have a little circle one. For, so when he's on medications that are midday, because some of his medications are three times a day, that way everything out ready to go streamlines it, make the process a little bit faster. What else do I have here? Oh, no, these, I just wanted to talk about these. You, any dog, right? Nail trimmers, holy smokes, they are so hard to use and they just crush their nail. These are fantastic. They actually trim it, they're easy to hold, really thin, so heads up, it's a great product. Syringes, you're gonna use a lot of syringes. I get the 60cc syringes for his tube feedings. It's easier um, to refill it less times. And I do reuse my syringes. I know they say they're single use, but we're not dealing with sterility here. The GI system is not a sterile system. What they eat is not sterile and what goes in their tube is not sterile. So I wash them out with soapy water afterwards and I reuse them. These plungers are a rubber type material and they dry out and it gets really hard to actually push them in there. So again, extra virgin olive oil. I just stick it in a baby food jar. My kids, well, I only had one child at the time and she was super tiny when he was diagnosed. So always had lots of these jars laying around. So same thing, clean them out really good, throw them in the dishwasher, fill it with olive oil, and then I just pop the top off each time before I do a feeding. And I take it in, dip it, gets it nice and goofy. And then I can slide the plunger back in here with a little work. They expand over time, that rubber part. So there comes a day where they won't be able to be used again, but I can usually get a good week's worth of feeding out of just one syringe. So saving money and the environment by reusing. Syringes that I have been getting lately with his medications don't have the little rubber part on there. These are fantastic, I love these. Last couple times I've gotten medicine, I've asked for an extra syringe. Always a good thing to do because you're gonna be using syringes with your dogs. Um, so that, and then of course you'll probably need some little teeny tiny ones. This one has the little rubber stopper on it. So same thing, you can throw a little bit of olive oil on there and it helps. To clean them out, I just use a little straw bottle brush. That works great to clean these little guys out afterwards. You'll want to have some med cups on hand because some pill some of the medications they get aren't in liquid form. I always ask for it in liquid so if I can get it, that's great. Otherwise, you will want a pill cutter. Here's also CVS. Um, so you can cut the pills in halves, quarters, and then to get them in the tube, you're gonna want a pill crusher. So this is a pill crusher. It just comes together like this. The pill sits in the bottom and you just crush it. You can also store extra pills in the bottom. So this is the opposite side. Pill crusher and pill cutter, super helpful. Um, oh, when I feed him, I usually set in the kitchen on the floor, but I use the little puppy pee pads because sometimes it's a messy process and that way it, spills on this. Again, I use the same one for weeks on end. They get a little gucky and then I toss them and get a new one. I was using old towels for quite a while. But I was, with two little kids, I was going through laundry like crazy. So I got these, which is maybe not environmentally friendly, but I really appreciate, <laughs> really appreciate it. For his food, when I mix it up, I use the canned food that he was on when we were doing the elevated feedings. Canned food, the wet food is heavier so it slides down their esophagus easier when you hold them up 
I call it meerkat position, right? Holding them up. I had an 18 month old in one arm and Cooper <laughs> on this hip up in, neck, up in um, meerkat position, bouncing him around. Um, so I don't know, it just, it, the wet food is what was going down his esophagus easier. Uh, so I stuck with that when we switched him over to the tube. Reason we got the tube, uh, the elevated feedings and the, holding him upright for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, it just wasn't effective. It, it worked for a while, then it slowly started not working. I bounced him on my hip like the baby. I started having him watch YouTube videos of other animals because he likes to watch those and they make him growl. And I thought the vibration might help work the food down. He started regurgitating a lot more. Quality of life was going down and our big thing, my husband and I, was quality of life. He is a feisty, silly, fun little terrier mix and he just was getting more and more worn out and our vet said, try it. I know you don't wanna be those people with the dog with a feeding tube, but I'm telling you his quality of life will drastically increase and she was totally right, so I'm so glad that we did it. The procedure to insert the feeding tube is only about like 15 or 20 minutes. It's just learning how to do it. I'm a nurse, I'm a pediatric oncology nurse. A lot of kids on chemo end up needing feeding tubes because chemo makes them not hungry and they lose weight really quickly. So feeding tubes are something that I was used to working with anyway. A little different with dogs, <laughs> but um, really the main difference I found is that kids hold still, dogs don't always hold still. So it's just getting them used to the routine. Um, and it's, it's, it is a big learning curve. The food they sent us home with was a different canned food. And I was mixing that one can of food with three cans of water and it still wasn't thin enough because it was so greasy. It was some sort of GI specialty canned food, it didn't work. So I switched to the canned food we were using before and it worked great. One can of food with about a quarter to a third cup of water in the blender. I use a Vitamix um, and I blend it for about a minute on high and it heats it up in the process, but you can make three days worth at a time. So I use mason jars to store it in. Let me show you real quick. Sorry, I don't know how to pause and do all of this, but these little mason jars are fantastic They're in my kitchen. <laughs> right now. So I just got a bunch of these, um, six, cause I do two feedings a day and I have a few extras cause occasionally I am really clumsy with soapy hands and drop and break them. But I like these just little plastic lids better than the lids that they come with because they clean it better in the dishwasher. So anything to make life easier. Mason jars are super helpful. Also with all the medications that they're on, being a nurse, I know about Mars, which is a medical administration record. So this is just one I kind of drew up of some of the stuff that he's on now. So you put your names of your medications and how often you give them every eight hours, twice a day, once a day, whatever it is, you write your times of those medications and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of days of the week. So as you give them with each feeding, whatever, you can just cross it off because the days run together and you'll think, did I do that today or was that yesterday? You're gonna lose your brain, especially with COVID and <laughs> quarantine, I've already lost my brain. But this, this has been really helpful for me. He's not on much now and everything is pretty much twice a day. I think only one thing is once a day and one thing is three times a day. So I've got it down. But for the first six months, I made these all the time. I just copied them on my computer or my um, copier and was good to go. So these, again, super helpful lifesaver, at least for me. Medications for dogs with mega esophagus usually revolve around GI motility, like cisapride and metachlorpamide. Our vet knows us and loves us, so they give us the ginormous bottle of metachlorpamide. They don't divvy it up anymore, they just give us the full thing. One thing that's also really helped, dogs, cats, animals that have GI issues, no matter how much you feed them, sometimes they will not gain weight and they will keep losing weight. And we ran into that with Cooper about three months after he got his feeding tube, he just was dropping weight, dropping weight, dropping weight. I went to three feedings a day, four feedings a day, still losing weight, cobaloquin. So this is B12 for animals. Prior to him being diagnosed, actually it always had to be given for an, by an injection, like by a shot. I think it was the University of Texas, um, their veterinary school came up with a medication, a B12 form that will be utilized in the, the gut of a dog or a cat because their GI systems are so short, they can actually absorb it. And so now it's just a pill form and it's dissolving. So you just mix it with a little water and voila, once a day. So check with your vet if your dog is losing weight quickly um, and not gaining weight back no matter what you do. Cobaloquin, you can now get it online even. It's not even prescription. You can get it on Amazon, 1-800-PET-MEDS, uh, any of those places. Sorry, I know I'm talking fast. I'm not good at um, being on camera. <laughs> 
So I hope you could follow. Send me a message if you can. I'll try to answer questions. Another thing, he gets really super gassy. I don't know why I feed him slow, but infant simethicone drops work well. You can ask your vet for the dosing information. He gets 0 0.35 mils, 375 mils, something like that. Um, so infant drops work really well. And he's on a lot of other medications, but it's some of it's cardiac medications because now he's having some heart issues, but there's a lot of meds. So the Mar, the Mar, I can't stress enough how super helpful that is. And, oh, syringes. One thing I was going to mention also. So there's different types when you go online to buy your main feeding syringes, which will be up to you to buy. You can get these from your vet or from the compounding pharmacy or your regular pharmacy. They usually give you a syringe with each refill. And I always ask for extras because you're going to go through these things. But so, okay, so this is called a slip tip syringe. It just slips right in. And then this is called a lure lock syringe. So it's kind of just, it kind of grabs on there a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that that well. Either one works with the feeding tubes. It doesn't matter. I buy whichever one I can find on sale. On Amazon, I usually get boxes of 50 of these syringes. And I'm trying to think what else. I have my little notes here. If the feeding tube gets really sluggish, you can use a little bit of Coke, two or three cc's, just Coca-Cola like you would drink. You'll draw it up in your syringe. You'll put that in their, in their tube and let it set there for about five or 10 minutes. And that's usually enough to break up all the gunk inside that's causing it to be really sluggish. And then you can flush it through with some water and they're good to go. Always flush after you're done with your feeding because uh, I always have to wash the bowls and everything right away because that stuff cakes on like cement. So all the bowls, the mason jars, whatever, I just go ahead, clean them up right away. Um, same thing with these guys, but always flush with, you know, 20 to 30 cc's of water is plenty. I always warm the water. Warm water seems to do better on their bellies. If it's cold, like ice cold water, it causes their stomach to cramp, which will cause them to regurgitate. Um, what else? I think that's about it that I have in here. He does get uh, air in his esophagus still. So I, I don't know why that's happening. The vet doesn't know. That's why we started him on the semethicone. You can hear my kids in the background. Uh, so what I do is again, hold him up meerkat style and pat him and kind of massage his neck because he, he tends to get this air bubble right here. You can watch when he breathes. He's just kind of doing this like in and out thing. So I just hold him upright, sit him on my lap, massage, and then he'll start belching and release that without having regurgitation. So if that happens to you, that's a good thing. Good little handy trip to know, tip to know. And I think that's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I uh, will do my best to answer things. I haven't been on YouTube for several years, but I'm back on and I am gonna start answering questions because I really wanna help people in this community. Megasophagus is a big deal. And if you're watching this video, you're probably finding out that your pet needs a feeding tube and you're like, oh my God, am I gonna be the person with the dog with a feeding tube? Yes, you are. If your vet says it will help your pet, don't be afraid, it's okay. You're gonna be fine. You'll do the feedings. You can watch the previous video that I made several years ago. I still do the same thing. I don't sit on the couch anymore. <laughs> I just sit on the floor in the kitchen because I am changed to the kitchen with Little Miss 50 Snacks, my four-year-old and my seven-year-old. Um, yeah, that's it's. I'm here all the time. I'm, I'm going to start watching. I really want to help. Any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. It's uh, Cooper's quality of life increased drastically. The stress was gone of wondering, is he going to eat? How much is he going to eat? Is he going to regurgitate? It all just goes in through the tube and it's fine. He still ends up with aspiration pneumonia about once a year because he's a barker. And when he barks repeatedly, it triggers that response and he will regurgitate. Even though he regurgitates probably five or six times a year, he only ends up with aspiration pneumonia once a year. And we know he has pneumonia. Usually his signs that he shows are fatigue. He just starts getting really run down. And then all of a sudden he'll start shivering, you know, like he's cold and sure enough, we check his temperature and he has a fever. So that's when we take him in, they throw him in on the antibiotics and sometimes, you know, nebulizer treatments as well, depending on how much pneumonia he has. And within two to three days, he is a world better. The antibiotic course is usually 10 to 14 days, I think is all. Um, and that's it. That's all I can think of right now. So I wish you all the best with your little furry one. I hope everything goes well. 
Again, questions, let me know. I will be here to answer them and good luck. They are so worth it. Your dog's quality of life will increase and he's still crazy feisty. Russell's with my kids, Russell's with our other dog. I, I can't recommend it enough. I know we thought we were crazy getting the feeding tube, but it has been a lifesaver and decreased our stress greatly. Five years, he's only on five years. He's now, he's now 15 years old and he has a feeding tube and he's still a little crazy maniac. So all the best to you. Thank you for watching. Good luck.